Uh, mm -hmm. You've long been a fan of this game and you've worked yeah. your way up. Just tell us about, about your journey as player to now where you're at. Um, okay, well, oh, I don't know. Do we want like, okay, I'll try to cliff note as much as I can. Um, but uh, basically, yeah, I started um, age group when my family first lived in Houston. When I moved to Chicago to start high school, I had found there was a high school uh, team because the uh, IHSA, the state organization, sponsored the same way uh, CIA, that California is CIF. And through that, I was able to find Lions, which was a nearby club. Um, and through there, I was able to then kind of find my way through ODP, as well as playing at Carthage, a Division three school in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, and then um, in between those summers, I'd come back to coach with the high school age group um, at Lions. And then after graduating, I had made the shift over to Windy City since it was closer to my day job. And then... Uh, so working even more so with age group with the 10 years, 12 years, 14 years, and then playing masters in between for Chicago Wildcats, which was a new masters team at the time. And then uh, about a year and a half into Windy City, I had applied to uh, coach at a lot of different colleges and Pomona Pitzer, I guess, was the one that was like, hey, why not have a Chicago person on staff? What's, what's the weirdest thing that could happen? <laughs> Hey, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe that opens yeah. up uh, a brand new pipeline from, from uh, the Midwest to Pomona, California. So. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of our incoming girls has actually uh, played for my old, former ODP coach. And so I'm excited to work with her at the collegiate level. Uh, so it's going to be great. Now, if, if you just heard Alyssa's journey in water polo, it's, it's pointless to ask her if she's passionate about the sport because we already <laughs> know this. You, you are as invested as it gets in, in the world of water polo. So yeah. I'll ask for, for those that are your contemporaries, right, people you played mm -hmm. with at Carthage or you played club, what's, what's your pitch to them to say, hey, stay, stay involved in this in some way? Yeah, um, I think my big pitch really would just be that um, – a lot of people give credit to the fact that uh, you make your closest lifelong friends through sports, and that doesn't stop at high school or at college. It, um, being, by being involved with Masters or even with Club Water Polo, you're able to continue to make friends. You're able to connect with more people. You're able to still have a social aspect that sometimes you don't get with, uh, just from working a day job. It's an opportunity to just meet more people, make new friends. And so I think that's my big pitch is um, – having those lifelong friends doesn't stop at high school college water polo. And I think furthermore to um, my other pitch being, if you really love the sport and you want to keep playing, there's an opportunity. There are always options. It just doesn't stop at high school or at college. Like there's, it keeps on going. It's the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> in more ways than you, one. You bring up a lot of, a lot of good points because um, if, if you're determined and you want to work hard, there are, opportunities to grow now look does everyone uh, will everyone get a chance to be the stanford head coach no but there are yeah. a lot of other paths available if mm -hmm. you want to put the time in to advance as a yeah. coach as a master's player travel the world as a referee you're someone that has traveled that road what mm -hmm. what sort of you know pride do you have in that you've 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 put hard work in and now you're getting opportunities um i I try not to think about it too much just because I think um, I'm trying to, or at, the very, at first, especially, I think when we had traveled to a lot of tournaments during the season and I got the chance to meet people like Dan Klatt, who lives a double life with the national team, meeting A-Rod and Law for the, fir her, for the first time in person. Like, I was very much like, oh my gosh, like, I'm here, I'm doing the thing, this is awesome. Um, and so now the more I get into it, I think, um, the more I'm able to think about it reflectively being like, I am here because people see something in me. And so I'm now able to kind of be in a position where I can sort of translate from just being like, oh my gosh, this is happening. This is awesome. This is great to wait. These are not people I can look to as colleagues. I can ask them for advice about things. I can learn from them. And I think it's just that sudden, uh, I think, realization that has really been the gateway towards reflecting on um the hard work aspect and realizing like yeah like i'm able to get to this point and call these people colleagues or call these people or network with these people because i've gotten to this point through being committed and being able to be super proactive where if there was something that was along the lines of either a clinic to help improve on coaching or being able to join organizations that help support women in coaching i thought kind of thinking retrospectively thinking hey like 
I've gotten to this point because I've been invested and now I get to go from just being a fan to a legitimate colleague and a legit and making a legitimate impact beyond just uh, the younger age groups. We're talking about staying in the game here. Had Christian Macias on earlier now. Alyssa Hawkins, thanks for those checking out in the comments here, Jallo and Frank. Uh, we're talking about ways to kind of stay involved, especially if you're in that 18 to 25 year old range. So you yeah. maybe maybe played high school and then you don't know what to do, or you finished college and you're thinking about staying involved. You mentioned your college experience in Wisconsin. We don't get a chance to talk about water polo in Wisconsin very often. Yeah. <laughs> but I was talking earlier about the idea that if you stay involved in some way, coach, mm -hmm. referee, player, you can make an impact. You were in an area where there isn't a lot of water polo. I'm mm -hmm. sure that was a glaring example of a spot that could use people invested mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, absolutely. Um I think it really says a lot to the fact that there is growth that's slowly but surely happening. I think with Carthage having a consistent varsity program on the women's side since uh, the mid 2000s and then Monmouth kind of came to the picture after the 2010s and then having now Augustana as we go more into 2020, I think it really is saying a lot to the investment for water polo in the Midwest, which is super exciting to see. But I know it's also something that definitely has a long way to go because I think that while we're definitely making some, some really great landmarks, I think um, the biggest key is definitely going to be just having more of that support and seeing more kids that, and more players that are taking advantage of those opportunities that if there are those programs where you can still compete, in the, especially at the NCAA level, it can be such a great, meaningful part of your overall college experience. And I'm excited to see where those things go. Um, I know I saw on Twitter that Augustana had officially hired their first head coach, which is awesome. And so I'm really excited just to kind of continue to see how much further along growth comes for water polo, at, especially with the NCAA level in the Midwest, um, and kind of seeing how that can trickle down towards high school and age group, for sure. Yeah, you bring up a lot of great points, and I, I think people should understand we were talking about growing the game earlier, and everyone thinks of that, I think, as – 18 and under, so you're gonna do splash mm -hmm. ball, you're in high school, but mm -hmm. it's that older age group. It's the, it's the post 18 yeah. crowd. If they stay engaged in some way as a master's athlete, as a coach, as a referee, that will help foster growth. You're from the mm -hmm. Chicago area, which has such great pride in the water mm -hmm. polo that has played there. If you think back to your time in high school and being around that area and living there afterwards, just kind of describe the, the energy and excitement that area mm -hmm. has for water polo and how badly they want to see it become a bigger thing. Yeah, um, I would definitely say I had um, lucked out with the clubs that I was participating in just because they had so much pride in being um, able to bring that sport to their local areas. Um, I think also too, a big part of it was, I think in turn, because so many athletes they had uh, go through their programs, whether it was from starting at age group, starting at high school, to be able to go on and advance to the collegiate level, whether it was playing at Michigan or playing at Navy or with Pepperdine or um, so many other different places. I think that was definitely a reaffirming factor in just the fact that um, water polo in Illinois is a very legitimate uh, thing. It's not something that you can kind of just brush off and think like, oh, like water polo is in Illinois. Like, that's so cool. It's like, wow, like water polo is in Illinois and there's a lot of really great athletes that are coming out of the state. That's really cool. And so I think the fact it's definitely been because of the fact that the coaches that are so involved and invested in it are um, so are just kind of take the um, the aspect of like people are kind of seeing that there's a great sense of legitimacy to it, and you're also seeing that now um, kind of like I said at the collegiate level and even with the national team seeing players from Illinois that are on the junior senior teams and just kind of being able to have a sense of affirmation for those coaches to realize like there is something to be had here and. I think a big part of why we see a lot more athletes involved, whether it is um, college, club college and beyond is because so many, those coaches also in turn kind of foster a sense of love for the sport um, and having those two really go hand in hand. Well, that's a really, really good stuff. Uh, appreciate you taking some time to talk mm -hmm. to us about, about your journey and why folks should kind of stay involved and uh, best of luck with the Pomona Pitzer program once yeah. everyone gets back in the pool. Awesome, thank you so much.